Hey, what's up? At its absolute worst, spinach artichoke dip is like a wet vegetable cheese mush. At its best, like we're making here today, it actually tastes like spinach and artichokes. It's well caramelized, it's the right kind of cheesy. It's a dope dip. <laughs> To address the taste like artichokes part of this dip, I'm gonna get started with three to four fresh artichokes. To clean these, I'm gonna pull off the outer layer of super fibrous leaves first. And I'm doing this by hand mainly because artichokes are a thistle. And as you can guess, this means that the outer shell is usually too fibrous for a chef's knife to make it through easily. Once I've got those peeled off, now I'm gonna grab my chef's knife and chop off the rest. Then using a paring knife, I'm gonna carefully peel the rest of anything green and fibrous around the heart. I like to start at the stem end of this thing and then work backwards towards the end that we just cut. And I know what you're thinking. Cleaning and cooking fresh artichokes seems excessive when you can buy a nice passable version in a can, but the flavor of fresh is really amazing and usually it's far superior to anything that comes in a can in my opinion. But that being said, I'm definitely not anti-canned artichoke. If you want to sub in a can of drained chopped artichokes, go ahead. This recipe is going to be delicious either way. Now, once all that green stuff is cleaned out, we're going to grab a spoon and scoop out anything fibrous on the bottom side. And this can be a little bit of a pain, but the more in season the artichoke is, in my experience, the less of this thistle stuff is going to be a problem. And after we got that out of there, there we go. Now we've got a really pretty cleaned artichoke heart. Now I'm going to dunk these into some water that has a juiced lemon in it to keep them from turning brown while I clean the rest of these artichokes. Once I've got four of these cleaned up, I'm going to poach them now in some water that I've brought up to a boil and salted liberally. These should take about six to eight minutes at a full simmer like this to become fully tender depending on their size. The best way I know to tell when they're cooked is to take a cake tester and give them a poke. It should go in and out like this with very little resistance. Also, give it a taste, they should be tender and still have just a little bit of bite. You also might be surprised at how great fresh artichokes taste if you've never really had a freshly cleaned and cooked heart. It's pretty special. Once these are all cooked, we're going to chop them down into small-ish pieces. We want hearty, chunky pieces in the dip, but we also don't want knobs of artichoke in there. So somewhere in the middle like this is going to be your best bet. Next, for the spinach part of this dip, I'm going to preheat a large Dutch oven over high heat and glug in two tablespoons of olive oil. Once that's heated, I'm going to dump in two bags of fresh spinach, or in this case, 500 grams. Behind that goes in one teaspoon of salt, and then I'm going to cook this down until everything is just wilted like this. We definitely don't want slimy spinach in our dip, so don't cook it down all day. From there, we're going to transfer this onto some paper towels, and then top those with some more paper towels and give everything a squish. Obviously, there's a lot of water in this spinach, and that's going to make a much less good dip if it's in there, so it's got to go. Once we got that all squeezed out, next, we're going to run our knife through this spinach four to five times to break it down pretty far. And if you're wondering, I prefer fresh spinach here to frozen because because, well, it has a lot more flavor to my taste, and it's also a lot less wet than frozen spinach. But that being said, just like the canned artichokes, I've made a lot of excellent versions of this dip with frozen spinach. Just make sure you drain the hell out of it before you throw it in the mix. Once this stuff is cut up and we're looking good, now we're gonna scoop it aside into a quart container and then grab our food processor to actually start making this dip. Into that, I'm gonna measure 225 grams of cream cheese, 110 grams of mayonnaise, behind that, 110 grams of sour cream, 65 grams or one large shallot mince, 10 grams or about two garlics, 40 grams of grated Parmesan, two grams of salt, two grams of black pepper, three grams of chili flake, 10 grams of lemon juice, and I have a blend of two cheeses here. One is pepper jack and the other is an aged smoked gouda. I've grated both on the largest whole size of my box grater like this. And I want to mention any combination of a melty cheese plus a funky cheese is going to work really well in this dip, as long as we have about 60 grams or two ounces of each item. Basically, it's your cheese dip. Go crazy. Anything's going to work. Just make sure that you have this blend, this balance in your dip. Next, I'm gonna throw the top on this thing and then spin everything up to combine for about 15 to 20 seconds, and there we go. Now, what we have here is a really versatile cheese dip base. It's like a mother sauce now. You can take it in a bunch of different directions like buffalo chicken dip, caramelized onion. Next goes in my chopped spinach, which I've drained really, really well, and I'm gonna briefly pulse all that to combine, not too hard. Then it goes in our chopped artichokes. Again, we're just gonna pulse things a little bit, gently, like this. Now, using rubber spatula, I'm gonna stir everything else up by hand to gently bring it all together. Together. We went through a lot of hard work cooking and hand chopping all these veggies, so we definitely want to make sure we keep as much of that nice texture in there as we can. Now we're going to flip this into a vessel for the baking portion of this dip. And you can go two ways here. These are ceramic ramekins, and they make really nice individual sized dips for you and your buddies. Kind of fun if you've got a few of those around. But these things can miss out on a fundamental item I listed earlier, which is caramelization. These things take too long to get hot in the oven. So to get that gnarly brown fried cheese edge on this stuff, I prefer using 
using a metal eight by eight brownie pan. This is the cheapest model that they have at the grocery store. And I love it because it gets hot super fast and kind of fries up that cheese dip a lot harder and gives us much needed caramelization. Once that's loaded up, now we're gonna top it with the rest of that melty funky cheese blend. Again, that's pepper jack and Gouda. And now I'm gonna load this into a 450 degree oven and bake it for 15 minutes. So while that bakes up, we gotta talk about the other part of this entire dip setup, which is how do you move that dip to your mouth. Normally I would just go to the grocery store and pick up some Pepperidge Farm party rice. This stuff is delicious, it's dark, it's kind of sweet, and it makes a really good dipper for spinach artichoke dip. But for the same reason that I couldn't just open a can of artichokes, I definitely couldn't just go to the store and buy Pepperidge Farm and just like open the package on camera. <laughs> That's stupid. So to make this, it's basically a very simple mechanical mix on high speed for about six minutes. Then I throw it in a bowl to rise on the countertop for about two hours. And from there, I divide the dough into two equal pieces and roll them out into a baguette shape. I proved these up in my couche, just like I did in the baguette video. And I will link to that baguette video in the description if you're more interested on a full breakdown of the baguette process start to finish. And like you see on the screen, the recipe for this rye baguette will be in the description of the video as well. Now we've got something that's crusty and rough that's gonna bring a little bit of dignity when you sit down to eat an entire bowl of cheese dip. Now, after 15 minutes at 450 degrees, this cheese dip should be melty and bubbly. The sides of this dip should be fried and well browned and everything in there has now come together as one. I'm gonna pull this out of the oven now and let it chill for a few minutes before I dive in. And in the meantime, I'm gonna toast off some of these rye baguettes. Overall, there's some serious R&D in this dip and I am so happy with the result. This dip is so true to its name. It's got tons of vegetable spinach flavor, chunks of properly cooked, very delicious poached artichokes and all that is supported by a strong cast of fun, funky, melty cheeses. You guys, this is truly a dope dip. My baggies are toasted, I'm hungry. Let's eat this dip. As always guys, thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please give it a like, hit subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. We'll see you next time.